guys, and welcome to a how to play for a new mini game supplement from Tales of Middle Earth. Um, we figured that the three peoples had knights and lances, so it kind of also figures that they would need to practice that skill. And this is where jousting comes in. Uh, it was used in medieval times for such purpose, and tournaments were held, and they were used to discover who had who was the best at their skill. So we kind of took the medieval jousting thing and thought, you know, what happens in Gondor seems to have, you know, they have Knights of Dalam Roth, Knights of Minas Tirith, they have lances. So we figured, you know, there might be jousting going on, just because we haven't read it in the books, it's, it's, just, it's a very much possibility. Uh, the game itself is pretty much played in the same manner as standard SBG, with priority roles being made, moving into base contact to charge, even though there will be a tilt barrier between the two knights and combat's played out as normal. The first thing you're going to need to do is create your champion. Uh, it's quite easy as it's picking uh, from one of the following profiles. Uh, we have included some evil profiles just to include evil players. Um, I'll leave the narrative background story up to you. Perhaps, you know, there's an Eastern cat frat included, perhaps you know someone from the East wants to take part in the tournament and everyone's okay with that. Uh, so for good you can choose from uh, a Knight of Minas Tirith, a Knight of Dol Amroth, a Rider of Rohan, a Galadrim Knight, a Knight of Rivendell and Mirkwood Cavalry. Evil you can pick from a Morgul Knight, Eastland cat frat, a Radrim Rider and a Serpent Rider. Uh, all the models are considered to have a jousting lance, even if their profiles don't list them. And you may also take a shield if uh, for the appropriate cost. And that is highly recommended as it gives you a bit of defense buff. Uh, you then roll on the movement, attack, or defense chance to give your champion a starting skill. Uh, we'll cover this in a moment, what these actually are. One thing to note at this stage, if you roll a 6, normally that means you roll on the Lord or Lady favour, but as you just get started, you don't do this, you just keep rolling until you get a non-6. Yeah, champions will have a points cost, and it's its base value plus 5 points for each progression made on the night chart, 10 points for each Lord or Lady favour you have, and 1 point for each movement, attack, defence and tilt token earned. And again, we'll be covering what they are later on. We're going to release a um, terrain making guide for this, so uh, we'll cover all what this is. But you'll need to create a, a tilt which is 18 inches long, and the middle four inches of that are called the attain. Players start at the opposite ends of, of the tilt, and when they, and opposite sides as well. And when they reach each other, you make charge rolls as as normal. And when you reach the ends of the uh, the tilt, you then go sort of move around it and go. Right charge down the opposite side. The game lasts for four courses and the course is where players uh, charge down the uh, down the till. Uh, you start off, all players start off with an empty tilt token uh, for movement, attack and defence. Uh, these will be, you can print, these are included in the rules which are available from download on the uh, from the, uh, we've got a Facebook group now, so you can download the rules for this there, and included in them are these tilt tokens that you can print out and cut out. At the start of the game, you set up your available tilt tokens into three separate piles for movement, attack, and defense, including the empty tilt tokens. Uh, now, at the start, you'll probably only have one extra tilt token, so you don't have to worry about this once, you'd only have one effective pile. And what you do at the beginning of the game, you draw run random tilt token for each of the three piles and then these are placed face down on the scoring board. Um, we will create those at a later date but at the moment just put them in front of your player. Uh, this is only done at the beginning of the game and represents a once per game perk. You may reveal one of these per joust. Um, if you plan on using a movement tilt token uh, that's revealed at the start of your movement phase. If you're using an attack tilt token it's done before the dual roll. And if you're using a defense tilt token, it's done once the dual roll has been uh, made and the winners of the charge has been decided upon. Once that token's been used, it's discarded and can no longer be used for that game. 
If you have gained any Lord or Lady favours, one of these can be chosen and can be used throughout the game, and that backs all four courses. Movement is 5 inches rather than the standard movement rate. The way you think of this is, say like in a normal game, a move turn lasts 3 seconds. So in that your knight moves 10 inches. In this game we've sort of shortened down the movement time, so it's like a, a second and a half, so that's why it's 5 inches. Uh, you must move your full movement distance, you can't just move an inch. There are skills that you can gain that kind of uh, allow you to do that. As standard you've got to move your full uh, movement distance. Unless, the only exception is, unless you've made it to the end of the till, in which case, and you've moved around the other side, on which side you can forfeit your movement, like all of it, until your opponent has made it round the other side. This is kind of given a fair chance to each other, or you can just charge down. <laughs> it's up to you how you play it. Uh, once you meet across the till, and there isn't a barrier bonus, you think that normally there you something like this you get a um, defense bonus, a barrier bonus, but there isn't for this. What you do is you make the dual roll as normal. Uh, if, a play, if you have more than one attack, you still roll multiple dice, even though you're not necessarily considering it striking multiple times. You're just you're just more powerful. You're using a more powerful blow of a lance. Uh, you don't gain any charge bonuses or lance bonuses as per the normal game because you both effectively charging in, you both got lances, so it effectively cancels them out. And if you lose uh, the dual roll, you don't move back an inch. This is important, you don't move back an inch. Rolling to wound happens next as normal, and because it's like a friendly tournament, you're not actually so wounding a person, but we use the term wound as it's in the game uh, for when we're explaining jousting rules. You can't make a wound on the mount, you're actually striking the, uh, the player, the, um, the rider. Uh, if a wound is lost, then the player that loses wounds will roll on the thrown rider chart. If a rider is thrown from the mount, you place a prone token next to them. Uh, the mount doesn't run away like normal. Um, the next turn you must use half your movement to uh, get back up and get back on your mount. Uh, you may not charge your opponent who is dismounted, uh, as that wouldn't be chivalrous, but you could gain a special skill to be able to do that if you want to play a bit of a nasty uh, type of character. You can use fate as normal to uh, prevent a wound. If a successful roll is made, then the from rider test is avoided, you don't have to do it then. But the player who causes the wound still earns a point, which we'll cover in scoring a bit later on. If you are charging an opponent who causes terror, you'll still make to, uh, need to make a terror test before moving. Uh, this is only if you're in charge range and not just moving down the list, it's only just if you're going to charge them. If the test is failed, you do not move as normal and additionally you have to roll on the thrown rider test. So that's you know, maybe causing terror to be a good thing. Each joust used the following scoring system. The player with the highest score wins the joust. If you're making a charge, you get one point. And if that charge is within the attain, the middle four inches, you get three points. If you score a wound on your opponent, you get another point. And if you manage to dismount your opponent, you get a further three points. Once all the courses have run, the player with the highest number of joust points wins that game. Both players have equal amount, then it's a draw. Each time you win a game, you earn one progression point, so you need to keep track of this as you play multiple uh, multiple games. And we are planning to include other sort of mini games for, for a tournament such as Artistry and hand to hand combat. And so if we do if you hold a whole tournament and win that whole tournament, say you've won all the games or the majority of the games, you'd get an additional five progression points. Once you earn the five progression points, you can pick from one of the uh, following charts and roll a d6. And the charts are the knight chart, the movement tilt token chart, the attack tilt token chart, and the defense tilt token chart. The knight chart has, if you get a one, you get no, you, you don't get anything. 
Uh, the night chart is probably the hard, the better one almost, but it's harder to get anything on it because if you do roll a one, you don't get anything. Um, if you roll a two, you get a defense increase uh, to a maximum of eight defense. If you already have an eight defense and you get this, you may pick your choice of one of the others. Attacks. You get that's you get an increased uh, attack dice on dual roll uh, to a maximum of three, and again, if you've already got a maximum of three, you can just pick one of the others. Fate is number four if you get a four, and again, it's a maximum of three. Uh, if you roll a five, you get a might boost, and again, maximum of three. And if you get a six, you can roll on the Lord or Lady favor chart, which we'll cover in a bit. The movement tilt token chart is. Uh, Sort of movement, as it implies, movement bonuses. If you get a one, this is actually a bad thing. It means your horse stumbles and you have to roll on the from right the chart. So, being you're picking these at random, that could be a you, you, there's a chance you could get that. It's just representing you know just that off day you think that happens to the best of us. If you roll a two, you get what's called good ground, and that increases your movement by one. Uh, three is the same. Roll a four, it's good ground again, but with two plus movement, and a five is similar, but with a three plus movement, and six is rolling on the Lord or Lady, uh, Lord or Lady favor chart. Tactile to token chart is what it implies. It gives you a skill uh, boosting your attack skill, or if you roll a one, you get a slip lance. It's minus one to your dual roll. Uh, two is good grip, which is plus one to your dual roll, and same for three. Rolling a 4 gives you good grip of a plus 2. Uh, rolling a 5 gives you true aim, which is plus 1 to roll on the wound, not when you're wounding. And 6 again is rolling on the Lord or Lady Favour chart. The Defence Tilt Token chart is going to give you a boost in making sure you don't get hit or falling off the your horse and such things. Uh, as usual, one is bad, it's poor defense, it means you get a minus one on your defense value. Uh, two, rolling two and three are the same, it's good defense with plus one defense value. A four is plus two uh, defense value. Rolling a five is called deflect charge, which causes your opponent to stumble and roll on the front rider chart, no matter if they win the dual roll or lose the dual roll, it um, causes that. And six is as usual, roll on the Lord or Lady favor chart. Again, the tilt tokens are just once per game uses. So once you've used them, they're gone. They can't be used on the following charge. So you have to sort of think carefully when 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 you're going to use them. Lord or Lady favor chart. Uh, these are bonuses that last throughout that entire game. Now, you, throughout you might earn multiple ones of these but you can only pick one per game so if you have got multiples you have to look what you what you feel like using for that game and you use it in that game now for this it's rolling a uh, 2d6 a one or two you get um you you don't get anything uh, um, so that's quite bad <laughs> um if you get a uh, three you add one to you get one might point. If you get four, you get plus one fate point. If you roll a five, you can ignore courage test. If you roll a six, you get plus one to your courage. It's probably good if you're facing a uh, terrifying enemy. Seven, you gain the expert rider rule. If you get an eight, you actually get to cause terror to your opponent. Number nine is if you win priority, you can choose to give it to your opponent. Which is quite handy, I guess, if you don't want to move, there's the tactics there. 10, you, you don't have to move your entire movement distance, but if you don't wish to, but you must at least move one inch. 11, when you're in a tilt token, you can draw two and pick the one you want, shuffling the unwanted one back into the bar. And 12 is pick any favor from this chart you do not already have. If you roll a result and already have that result, you actually don't gain any favor this time. Uh, new favors are quite difficult to earn. As you, as you progress. And that's that's the rules. Uh, the more you play the game, hopefully um, 
they'll make sense. If you do have any questions, please don't feel free to ask, perhaps over on the, our Facebook group page, probably the best place to ask, or leave a comment down below. Um, we're going to play a few games and have a few battle reports of this on the site, so um, I hope you have fun with this. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and leave a comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Stick with the channel for many great videos to come.